You signed a contract. Okay, I'm only gonna have sex once a week with my girlfriend. Um, and then you sign it. Yes, people, welcome to the Blood Pundit where I speak my mind and you can see it. Let's get right into it. Gigi Bekali, I hope I pronounced that name right, the owner of Bucharest Football Club, said that the reason his players are not playing well is because they're having sex too much. Really? He did say this and I quote, My players are making love with their girlfriends too often. That's why they aren't playing football so well lately. Really? Okay. How did he even know that? How does he know that? Like, seriously, I'm still trying to wrap that around my head. This is actually an old news now, but I'm still trying to wrap this around my head for the past couple of weeks. And I thought I should do this video and ask that question. How does he know? Like, seriously. He didn't really stop there. He went on to say this. Look at Dan Patricio. The CFR players have sex only once a week. They meet with women only once a week. Huh. Now, what I'm trying to make out of this is... Does they have spies that are spying on the players and knows what their routine is with their wives or their girlfriends? And then, what I don't get is, it's like they sign a contract in Romania. Because I want you guys to listen carefully. You sign a contract. Okay, I'm only gonna have sex once a week with my girlfriend, um, and then you sign it. It just doesn't make sense. Do you know what I mean? Okay, fine. I have some Romanian friends. Maybe I'm gonna ask them. I've got Bogdan. I've got Lavinia. Yeah, maybe I should ask them that question because what I don't understand is does sex affect footballers negatively or positively? I think that's something I want to ask you guys. Please put that in the comment section. Because I don't see how he can just make that bold statement. And he's really bored about it. He said that's the reason they are in fourth position now and CFR are first position. Because CFR players, apparently, they're the ones leaving the table. They only have sex once a week. Me, I don't understand how he got that information. But I really want to hear your thoughts about this down in the comment sections. Let me know. I'm just speaking my mind, guys. Yes, guys, I think I've been watching football for a long time to actually know when the pundit is biased. And for me, the world's most biased pundit is a man called Steve Nico. He's apparently a Liverpool great that has won a lot of honours with Liverpool, but for me, he's a bit biased when it comes to Liverpool. Now, let's track back a little. We all know that the last five games, Liverpool has lost three of them, right? They've lost to Atletico Madrid, they've lost to Watford. I'm a fan, so I should be happy about Watford because apparently they couldn't get out invisible. But that's besides the point. And then they just lost to Chelsea in the FA Cup. Now, he went on to say that Liverpool or Klopp rather did not take that game seriously because he played six players that don't normally start. I think what you can see is Liverpool and Klopp hoped to win this game, and that's reflected in the team they put out. You know, a mixture of first team players, kids and guys that come off the bench usually. That hasn't got, I want to win this tournament written all over it. This has got, I'm hoping that with the quality we have, we've got enough to beat a Chelsea side. I think that's- Now that for me is a bit ridiculous. Do you know why I say it's a bit ridiculous? Because even Chelsea had at least five players, well, six to five, what the hell, just one player difference. Chelsea also had five players that don't start. Let's, let's have a look at it. Well, they've got Joe Root, They've got Gilmore. Gilmore is an 18 year old, an 18 year old for crying out loud. And he was the man of the match in that game. We've also got Pedro, we've got Barkley, we've got Azir Balaga. I don't know how to pronounce that guy's name to save my life. But the truth about the matter, he's got five players that don't start. Now you can look at Liverpool, they've got six players. Yes, they've got someone called Tak Takunim, Lalana, Origi, um, Jones, Williams, and Adrian. Five, six to five, what the hell? Don't be salty. You don't need to be biased about Liverpool because they're yeah, Liverpool great and all that. The fact of the matter is, Liverpool lost to Chelsea. It's really that simple and I think they're in a different form right now that you shouldn't make excuses for them. And he's going to say that the game doesn't matter much to Klopp. Of course FA Cup matters to Klopp. You don't say that. For me, I think he only did that because he needed to rest his players for another game. Probably against Bournemouth in the Premier League. Or, you know, um, against Atletico Madrid in the second leg. But don't say he, he didn't take it seriously. Come on, man. This is coming from the same man that said that Ramos is not a world-class player. Seriously? 
Seriously? Ramos is not a world-class player? Guys, listen to this. Robert Lewandowski was asked about the toughest opponent he's ever played against, and he, he said this, there are plenty of good defenders, but it has always been great to have duels against Sergio Ramos. He <laughs> I'm telling you that he has, he has been a good defender, yes, but when I hear this world-class stuff, mm. I will go to what I always tell you. World-class defenders don't have world record amounts of yellow and red cards. Mm. So don't tell me he's world-class. Yes, he's a good defender. Yes, he's a warrior. Mm. Absolutely, he's a warrior. And yes, he's a legend. All those goals that he scored for Real Madrid in the dying seconds, 100% legend. Mm. But don't tell me he's a world-class defender. Mm. No, no, I'm not taking that. Fra After Ramos, fouled Salah in the Champions League. He referred to him as a thug. He referred to him as a thug. You're going to praise a guy for physically putting him out the game. That's not a world-class footballer. That's a thug. Now, let's just analyse these guys for one minute. Let's analyse this for one minute. Look at the amount of cups that Ramos has actually won in his career. And the amount of medals. Just have a look at this, guys. This guy has won 25 cups. 25! What more do you want to be classified as a world-class player? Even John O'Shea that played for Manchester United was classified as a world-class player because he won a lot of, you know, trophies with Manchester United. Personally, I don't rate him that much, but he's someone that is a utility player and people will still look up to him and say, okay, he's won this many cups. I'm not saying that cups are what makes you a world-class player. I'm not saying that, don't get me wrong. Because people start saying, oh yeah, because you won a lot of cups. No, sometimes you can be lucky enough to play, you know, in a world class squad. And that way you can win a lot of honours with them. But the truth about the matter is, in all this time that Ramos won all these cups, he was a mainstay player. He was a main figure in the defence. He was the guy that wins games for them. He's probably one of the highest goal scoring defender in the world. Yes, he's got the highest number of red cards, which is a bad, you know, dent on his, um, on, on him. But the point of the whole matter is, He's a world-class player, as far as I'm concerned. I want you guys to tell me what you think. I don't know what Steve Nicholl is smoking, but I think for me, he's the world most biased pundit. Hands down. No doubt about it. Well, guys, like I say, I'm just speaking my mind. Lovers to be lovers, haters to be haters. If you love me, I love that. If you hate me, well, life is too short for you. I'm on the there, guys. Stay safe, people.